Hello Vinyl Community, I'm back again today to do a product review. And as you can tell from the title below, I am doing a review of the Kermos Ultrasonic Record Cleaner. This particular unit I've had for over a year now, and I do want to talk about my experiences with it. Uh, in particular, the ultrasonic cleaning aspect and not the full length LP cleaning that one would go through for the entire package. And I'll explain a little bit of this a little bit later, but I also want to talk about why I selected this particular unit over others. And I do want to give you some sound samples so you can tell how good of a job it does clean. So let's get into it. Let's talk about what makes ultrasonic record cleaning so special. Ultrasonic cleaners use pressure waves to induce millions upon millions of microscopic vapor bubbles through the process of cavitation. These bubbles are invisible to the naked eye, but they're there, believe me. These bubbles implode as quickly as they form, and the implosion process is what really dislodges and breaks down the grease, oils, and dirt that you find on your record surface. They get to places where your other cleaners just can't. And this is why they're used in the medical and automotive industries. To show you an example of the process in action, I want to use this beat up Johnny Mathis LP, which was thrown in with another record I ordered on Discogs. As you can see, this LP is like many you're gonna find of the same age in the dollar bins. It's pretty dirty. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this colored pencil and make sure the markings, there are markings on the surface. This is really a sacrificial record that already has plenty of scratches, so a few more are not going to hurt in this demonstration, and I really don't want to put this LP on my turntable anyway. Now when I dip the record in the water and swish it around, you can see the pencil marks don't really come off at all. But when I dip it in and I turn on the ultrasonic cleaner, you can see how quickly the pencil markings fall off the surface. This is why using an ultrasonic cleaner is recommended for cleaning your records. Now, before we get into this, I'm sure there are some that are thinking, well, why didn't you just buy one of those higher-end models? Well, there are a couple of reasons which precluded me from doing that, so let me explain. One of the first models I first started to really look at was one of the first ones to hit the mass market, and that was the audio desk system. This model and the two others, which I'm going to show you here quickly, are basically a push button process that does all the cleaning and drying in one shot. Moreover, the benefit of these models is that they filter out the dirty water, which is something most of the others cannot do. Now, shortly after the audio disc desk system hit the market, uh, there came along a couple others. So the Claudio unit, which has a lot of similar functionality, hit the market. Uh, and Claudio, I believe, was made in the United States. Uh, the Degritter is one of the latest models uh, coming from Europe. The Degritter works at, at a much higher sonic frequency of 120 kilohertz to be exact. Uh, and has, you know, a lot of really positive reviews. Now, why didn't I choose one of those models? Well, first of all, if you want to clean a 10 inch or a 7 inch record, you need to buy a separate adapter. And these adapters run around $100. From the reviews I've read about the adapters, they don't work that well all the time. Uh, there are people that have commented that they've had the records just fall straight out of the adapter. Um, so, that didn't, I didn't like that at all. I mean, because I do have 7 inch and 10 inch records. I mean, I have mostly LPs, but I do want to have the capability of cleaning a 10 inch and a 7 inch record. Uh, the second reason is that each of these units have parts that you're going to have to replace. Uh, the audio desk system, for example, has microfiber rollers that need to be replaced after every few hundred records. And even the rollers themselves, uh, are priced around $100. Now lastly, I'm a firm believer in why pay more money for something when you don't have to. So don't get me wrong, each of these machines are fantastic and the automatic drawing and water filtering is a huge benefit, but you know, paying a couple thousand dollars more for something that I can do manually, you know, I, I just can't see it. 
So on the opposite side of the spectrum, there's uh, multiple quasi DYI solutions out there that involve you purchasing your own separate six liter ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, you know, you can find these all over eBay and Amazon. Uh, these companies that, you know, have these quasi solutions are basically um, selling you a drive motor and all the LP spindle attachments. So if you ask me, it's a bit on the expensive side for what they're asking, uh, but you can find a solution for around uh, just over $200 that could work. Now, <laughs> they are expensive, but if you look at the spin clean, for example, it's like $80 for just a, a piece of injection molded plastic, go figure. So, I mean, this is the audiophile industry, so yeah. Uh, these guys have to make a profit, so there's huge markup on all these things. But in all honesty, you know, those cheap solutions should be able to do the job just as well as the higher end unit and the unit that I'm reviewing today. It's just a little more labor uh, to get your LPs on and off the spindles and get the job done. But, you know, ultimately they will uh, do a good job uh, or just as good a job as any of these on the market. Now, let's talk about the Care Moose. Uh, the Care Moose is just a modified iSonic cleaner or some other Chinese branded ultrasonic cleaner. So I, I saw uh, someone say that, no, this is truly a Chinese brand and iSonic is buying them from China. Well, the Care Moose solution is basically a modification to this iSonic cleaner. And it, it's nice in that it allows you to clean two LPs, a 10 inch and a seven inch record all at the same time. No other unit on the market will allow for this. I mean, in, in terms of a drop-in model. So you just basically drop your records in, hit start, and you're good to go. There's no changing of adapters or replacing records on a spindle. Uh, this is one of the main selling points for me. While I can't say for certain, uh, I, perhaps Isonic saw the success of the Kiramis unit and decided to make their own because you're gonna see an Isonic. So what do you get in the Kiramis package? So outside of the base unit's power supply and drain hose, you're going to get two of these combo carbon fiber slash felt brushes, a bottle of antibacterial anti-static cleaner, one bottle of stylus cleaner, a microfiber cloth, an optician's microfiber cloth, a five inch felt mat for applying these cleaners, a goat hairbrush for applying surfactant, and most critically for me, two additional felt wiper bars, which wipes the solution off the surface of the LP as it rotates through the open air. These parts uh, are going to see the most wear over time, and having these replacements is vital for long-term operation. Most of the package additions with the Karamoose, like the, are for his antifungal restoration process, for me, the bottom line is ultrasonic cleaning alone is sometimes not enough to remove all the caked on debris, so you need a mechanical or non-abrasive brushing to liberate the particles. So this is why he's trying to package all this stuff in there. Um, again, I have not used it, um, but if folks are curious, I'd be more than happy to try it out and give folks my thoughts. But to me, you need a mechanical process, so I use a vacuuming. Now, if there is a con to buying this unit, besides the lack of auto drying and water filtration, it's this damn bunny. <laughs> While some might think it's cute, I personally find it annoying. Uh, the supplied instruction manual is well intentioned, but it comes across as a little condescending, preachy, and it's filled with so many bolded words. I mean, you feel like your life is being threatened, but it does have some useful information. For example, you have to pay attention to the temperature status bar and, you know, how often to change the water. So rule of thumb, he says about 20 records and you want to change the water. And I can attest to that. The operation of the unit is very simple. So you fill the tank with about eight liters of distilled water. Then you add about 40 milliliters of 70% isopropyl alcohol. You degas the unit, there's a degas function, and you're good to go. Now, there are some that are probably freaking out right now about the use of alcohol. 
In all seriousness, unless someone can show me the chemistry, that's just a wives' tale. If you look at the material compatibility online, PVC is compatible with alcohol. I mean, we store alcohol in plastic. Granted, it's a different type of plastic. It's high-density polyethylene. But I don't hear people freaking out about their bottles of alcohol degrading. So don't peddle that particular myth, people. Unless you can show me the chemistry, I'm okay with being proven wrong. I don't buy into it. So after you're done with about 20 records of cleaning, you're going to have to change the water. Draining the unit is easy when you're done. You just attach the supplied drain hose and drain into a bucket. At the end, you're going to see some residue at the bottom so you can see how effectively it's cleaned and you're just going to wipe that all up. So, very easy. The record that I've chosen to clean for you guys is this New York Taxi Driver LP. Yeah, I know, it's super exciting. But there's some reasons why I selected this one. So, first of all, uh, it's fairly obscure and I don't think I'm going to get a copyright strike if I give you a sand sample of this one. Uh, the next reason was it was incredibly dirty, uh, as you can see, um, and so I wouldn't even put this on my record player uh, in the state it was in. Uh, the last reason is it's a spoken word piece, so um, I want to give you a sense of, you know, some of the dead spaces in between the spoken parts and in between words, so you get a sense of how clean the LP actually became. So here's the sample. There are 13,000 taxi cabs in New York City, most of them company owned and some of them private. In a night and day shift, that adds up to 26,000 cabbies with 12,000 more. Paul, today that same, that same job, the undertakers, a driver gets seven and a half dollars when he goes on that car to go to the cemetery. If he goes twice to the cemetery, it's $15. That's our job. Who are these men? How do they live away from the job? They've been called wise guys and con men, poets and bums, raconteurs. In conclusion, I'm really satisfied with the Kermus ultrasonic record cleaning machine. Now, I realize that it's a little bit expensive for some of my viewers that are out there, but you know, if you're really looking to step up your cleaning game, uh, you can put together a nice solution for a little over $300. Uh, you just do a little bit of research and I think ultrasonic is the best way to go, but I don't think it's a complete solution by any means. I found out that, you know, there are cases where there is caked on dirt and grime that I just couldn't get removed via ultrasonic cleaning. So I had to couple it with a mechanical process. Now you can use a brush and lightly scrub you don't want to use anything that's abrasive but i am using a vacuum cleaning machine as well and coupling it with the ultrasonic and i'm finding that it is effective in removing 90.99.9 percent of all particulate matter that accumulates on the lp surface but those are just my thoughts um, do you have thoughts do you have experiences with ultrasonic record cleaning uh, shoot me a comment down below and i'll catch you next time We'll